Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl and I'm here today with a project for Not Too Shabby. I'm going to be using the newest stamp of the month, Berry Christmas, and some masking and stenciling to create a single layer winter scene card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Here is a look at this month's stamp and die bundle from Not Too Shabby. If you're in the Christmas in July mood, this stamp and die bundle is for you. The stamp set includes these four adorable bears that come with a coordinating snowflake and some punny sentiments. And I almost forgot one of my favorite parts, the little dots down here so you can add rosy cheeks to your bears. It is not available as just the stamp set anymore, but there are some bundles left. So if you like the set, you might want to get over there before they're sold out. The dies that you'll get will coordinate with all the images, sentiments, and the little snowflake. I will have a link in that description box below if you want to check it out after the video. Today, I'm going to be creating a single layer card, so I will just be using the stamp set. And I thought for some added interest in the background, I would use the new Here Comes the Sun stencil, which came with this month's Box of the Month. Now, if this is available as a single stencil, I will link it in that description box below as well. As I start the process, I will let you know of any other tools or products that I bring in. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to start today by doing the stamping and because I will be using alcohol markers later, I will be using Memento ink. I chose three bears from the stamp set and the first thing I'm going to do is stamp each of them onto a piece of masking paper. This way I can cut these out later so I can mask off the bears I've stamped onto the card front. Now normally you don't have to have these be the best images if you're going to fussy cut them but I was going to use my brother's scan and cut so I ended up inking them up and stamping them twice before setting them off to the side. The rest of the stamping will be onto the piece that will go onto the card front and because I want eventually all three bears to be centered nicely on this, I did go ahead and lay out all three before picking up the center one only with the door of the Misty. I inked the image up and stamped it a couple of times to get a nice crisp black image. Then I brought in my masks, which I had cut with my brother's scan and cut, and I chose the one of the bear that I just stamped. I put this right in place over the top of it, and then I got my other two bears set up on the sides. Once I got the outer two bears picked up with the door of the Misty, I spent some time making sure that they were standing upright with their feet on the same etched line on the top of the Misty. I eventually got them in a good place and once again inked up and stamped it twice. Now because the masking paper is there, I did try to use a little extra pressure to get those stamped lines as close as possible to that center bear. I placed the other two masks that I had cut out and then I brought back in that roll of masking paper. I wanted to create kind of a snowy hill for my scene so I brought in this wavy cutter I have had forever, snipped off a piece of the masking paper and cut a wave on the end. 
I put this mask in place on top of the other three and then it was time to do some ink blending. Now because I have some excess masking paper around that, I use that to help me hold my card down to my grid paper. And I'm just using this graph paper just to catch any stray ink. I'm going to use a couple different blues to do this and of course that stencil. I started off with the lightest blue and I just kind of went from the center out. I did try to get a light shade all the way to the edge of this piece of cardstock. Then using that same light blue ink, I came around just the edge of each of the bare images a little bit darker. I did do this probably two or three times until I thought I had enough color built up. Then I spent a little time deciding which side of the stencil I wanted to use and when I did decide I held that in place with a couple pieces of painters tape while I got out the darker blue ink and inked up the stencil. I just like these rays kind of standing out behind the bears. I did a couple layers of the blue and now it's time for my favorite part, the reveal. Since these masks are still sticky, I did go ahead and save them right on the back of my stamp packaging. Now before I got ready to move on to the next step, I realized that the mask I cut with my brother Scan and Cut did not leave an opening between the bear on the left and his earmuff headband. So what I did, I cut a piece out of the mask that was inked in and I just put that right there for now. Now I'm going to do a little spotlight or accent coloring. Instead of coloring in the complete images, I will just be coloring in a little bit of each. On the middle there, I'm going to use a red tri-blend marker to color in the present that the bear is holding. Now I will show you some of the coloring now, but if you want to skip it, you can jump ahead about a minute. Here's a look at the finished colored piece. I did go ahead and bring in a brown for the tree trunk and a yellow for the star. I will list all of the marker colors in that description box below if you are interested. Next, I brought in a rectangle die that had some stitching on it and I die cut this off screen. I just like the nice crisp edges it gives with that stitching detail. I decided that I wanted to add a little sparkle, so I brought in a couple bottles of stickles. I used some gold on the star on the tree, and you might be wondering, you already colored it in, why would you cover that up? And that's just if the glitter misses any part of the star, there is still color behind it. Then using the white stickles, I went along the snowy hill there on both sides of the card. Originally I was going to do a thin line, but instead I just kind of spread it out a little bit more so that line was thicker, maybe looking more like it was snowy. I also added a few trios of dots up in the sky, and then I set this to the side to dry for a good couple hours because you don't want to stick your fingers in wet stickles. Off camera, I did decide to add a little bit more of the white stickles right underneath each of the bears. I also used my white Posca pen and added some detail to the colored areas on each of the bears. 
Here are some close-up looks at the finished card. On the inside, I did add a sentiment and some decorations in a couple of the corners. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.